My name is Christoph Delavo for TennisOxygen.com. This next video analysis, I'm going to compare the ATP Tour style forehand to the WTA Tour style forehand. The ATP Tour forehand has gone through an evolution, a Darwin-like evolution in the last decade or so, out of necessity not so much to generate power, but more importantly, how to handle power. Let's face it, on both tour, the game of tennis today has become a power-driven game. So if that evolution really had to happen because if players didn't do it, they would just get blown off the court. So I'm going to show you how this evolution actually has helped not only to generate power, but also to handle power. When I look at the WTA style forehand, I see how the lack of evolution has allowed players to dominate the game using brute force. Who has dominated the game in the last 10 years on the WTA Tour? Well, we can go back to Davenport, Kleisters, both Serena and Venus. They've accounted for more Grand Slam than those four than any other players. Now, what do these four players have in common? They're physically stronger and bigger than their opponents. They can go out there and really just blow people off the court. Now, the one player that won seven Grand Slams while these four players were active was Justine Hennen, about standing about five foot six, maybe five foot seven. And well, how was she able to really handle that power and create just as much power? she had an ATP style forehand. Now I'm not saying that the forehand is the only thing you need, but if you don't have a big forehand, because the forehand accounts for about 70% of the shots at the baseline and 85% of the winner. So you need a big forehand. Now, if you look at the, ATP, the WTA Tour right now, there's one player that has an ATP style forehand. It is Sam Stozer. She won a Grand Slam recently. Another one in the top 30 that was in the top 10 player a few years ago with Francesca Schiavioni. She has an ATP style forehand. Is it a coincidence? I think not. Now, what I'm really excited about is I talk, spoke to a, a friend of mine uh, that is a, a coach's young girls, Nick Blackwood from the Pavel Blackwood Tennis Academy in Arizona, and told me that he's seeing more and more young girls go into that ATP style forehand. So I truly believe there's an evolution that is slowly happening on the uh, WTA side. And I will show in this video, I'm going to show you young up and coming Christina McHale that she has an ATP style forehand. So I'm really excited about this video and I really hope you enjoy it. Their first variation is the most obvious one between the ATP and WTA style forehand. It's the length of the backswing phase prior to going into the forward swing phase. You can see here how Novak's racket is never gonna go behind his back. The racket is always gonna stay outside of his body. While on the WTA style forehand, after the unit turn, when the racket is about to blend, into the forward swing phase of the stroke that the racket appears behind the body. We see the same variation with Roger and Serena. Well, I'm gonna stop the film right when the racket is dropping into the blending of the stroke, right when the racket is about to go forward. We can see that Roger's racket is staying outside of his body. The racket is behind him, but outside of the body while Serena, right when the racket is dropping into the forward swing phase of the stroke, that the racket went beyond her and behind her back. This rear angle is really going to illustrate how the ATP style forehand remains on the outside of the body, demonstrated here by Andy Murray. And while Venus is about to blend the back swing phase into the forward swing phase of the stroke, that the racket has gone beyond her back. The reason why I chose Rafa and Wozniacki together is because both of those players have really long, loopy swings. Rafa out of the top four definitely has the longer stroke of the top four. And Kael Wozniacki always been accused of having long, loopy strokes. So to make more sense of this video, I'm going to take Rafa and flip him as a right-handed player so we can have a little fun right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to superimpose both players. Now, what I'm going to do is, after I line them up, I'm going to show you this is Wozniacki, and I'm going to stop the racket right when it starts to drop into the fourth swing phase of the swing. And Rafa, I'm going to do the same thing right when the racket is dropping in the fourth swing phase of the swing. And now you can see right now the length between the two backswing. How much further back beyond her body Wozniacki's racket went and where Rafa's racket stayed on the inside of his body. The second variation is the role of the non-hitting hand immediately after the unit turn. 
during the unit turn, both forehand style, you can see the non inning hand is on the throw of the racket. Now, immediately after the, the ATP style forehand, when they release the non inning hand and begin the backswing phase, you're going to see how the non inning hand is going to remain across the body and almost parallel to the baseline. Where immediately after releasing the racket, you're going to see on the WTA style forehand how the left hand is going to be pointing uh, directly at the ball and almost being uh, perpendicular to the baseline. Now you're going to see how every single WTA style player is going to make the exact same move with the non inning hand. You're going to see here how Serena, her left hand is, du is pointing directly at the ball, so perpendicular to the baseline. You're going to see how Venus is going to make the exact same move, letting go, and the left hand comes forward. And you're going to see a Caroline Wozniacki will do, do an exact same thing. Now, the women are going to do this basically for one reason and one reason only. One, they let go of the left hand a little sooner than the guys because the stroke is going to be longer. And when the left hand, or the, the racket gets way beyond them with that big backswing, they need to stay balanced. And that left hand will really um, counteract as more as, as a, a really a stay in balance throughout the backswing phase of the stroke because you'll see on the ATP style forehand and WT style forehand when they come around they will come around pretty much in the exact same spot but since the backswing is so big that left that non hitting hand needs to get out in front for the players to keep their balance now you're going to see here how Novak and Roger Federer non hitting hand will remain across and their body parallel to the baseline You'll see how Andy Murray will make the exact same move. Now, the reason why the guys can keep the not any hand there is because their short, their stroke is a lot shorter, and that is really going to play into the really the high power slot I will be talking about later. They can stay coiled a little longer, so they can really violently come around and bring and open up their body. So that has really has to do with the length of the backswing. Really, is going to affect what the not any hand does on the WTA side versus the shorter backswing on the ATP side will allow the, the knot in the hand to stay across the body longer. The next variation is the position of the elbow during the backswing phase of the stroke immediately after the unit turn. It is really where the elbow is positioned and the proximity of the elbow to the body. You're gonna see on the ATP style forehand that the elbow is much higher than the WTA style forehand. And the second difference is how much further away the arm is set on the ATP style and how much closer to the body the hitting elbow remains close to the body. Now the main reason why the guys keep the elbow up and away from the body is because the ATP player is setting up for a much direct swing path to the ball, a much quicker swing setting up a swing really with the arm swinging more independently from the body. Since he's going to keep the racket outside the body, the elbow needs to stay up and away from the body. But the women, by bringing the racket beyond themselves, behind the body, that's pretty much why the elbow is setting up right there. So that's really setting up that long, loopier backswing that I was talking about. And then really forcing the women now to start to uncoil into making contact versus the guys are going to really going to swing more the arm the beginning of the the swing will be more with the arm swinging independently from the body versus uncoiling into the shot it's very subtle variation has a huge impact on the type of swing each player will use the initial position of the elbow will not only influence but define the type of stroke each side will use you can see here Nole, by keeping the elbow up and away from his body, will allow a much quicker motion forward swing to the ball. Where on a WTA style, by keeping the elbow down and close to the body, it's really calling for a much longer backswing, taking the racket beyond the shoulders. So that very subtle variation at the beginning of the stroke really affects the entire swing. This next variation really sets the two strokes apart. It is the position of the hand in relationship to the racket during the backswing phase of the stroke. What I mean by that is I want you to focus on where the head of the racket is in relationship to the hand throughout the backswing phase of the stroke. The head of the racket will stay outside the hand throughout the entire backswing phase of the stroke. 
Now we already know that the arm is going to stay outside the body, but now not only the arm, but the head of the racket is going to stay outside the hand and the arm as well. Where you can see on the WTA style forehand that right away as the backswing phase begins to blend to the forward swing phase that the head of the racket is going to get beyond the hand right away. And it is this racket and hand position that will have a huge effect on your upcoming move which you called the higher power slot. You can see how right away the head of the racket is beyond not only the body but is also beyond the hand. Once again I flipped Rafael right handed then we can see and compare the two strokes a little easier. Now once again you're going to see how Rafa's racket head really remains outside of his hand and in the WTA style forehand right away the racket head goes beyond the hand. This will have a dramatic effect and is the main reason why the guys will be able to create much more racket head speed and much more top spin eye contact versus the WTA style forehand. Both ATP and WTA players are going to get into the slot. What is a slot? Well, it's when the racket, the butt cap of the racket is pointing at the ball, the wrist is laid back while the racket is pointing back towards the back fence. So you can see here that both Roger and Serena got into the slot. But the biggest variation is how they got into the slot. And that is really going to be a huge difference into the two shots. Now you're going to see now Roger what I've just been talking about on, in the first uh, three variations where when the, the, sh the swing is much shorter, the racket stays outside the hand, the, rack the hand stays outside the body, and right when the racket is about to go forward, at this last second, you're going to see how the ATP style forehand, the wrist lays back and it flips back and gets into the slot. So how long it's going to going to hold, 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 and this is what's going to ca uh, cause the high powered slot. And you're going to see the WTA style forehand that the racket almost gets in the slot very, very early. So now the racket is going to come around more because of an uncoiling motion. So it's going to be more the arm, really the body bringing the armor one to contact versus the ATP style forehand. It's going to be more, as I talked about earlier, where the arm is going to swing much more independently from the body because of this quick wrist action right there. How the ATP style forehand really lay, they lay the wrist back, the wrist back, they kind of flip it back and really hang on to the last possible second to flip it around. And this is the key of how the ATP players will get a lot more racket head speed than the WTA players. We're going to see the exact same variation using Nole and Maria. We can see how when Nole is completing the backswing phase of the stroke that the racket head has remained not only outside the body but also outside the hand and while Maria has separated the hands and when the backswing phase is just starting to blend into the forward swing phase that the racket head is not only beyond the body but also beyond the hand so when they're both going to get into the slot you're going to see that no lay is going to get to the slot in a much more violent way it's going to be a lot quicker to the ball shorter motion but much quicker to the ball which will re result into much more high racket head speed than Maria we can see here Maria also kind of laboring through bringing the body around where no lay is more of a release and once again swinging the arm a little bit more independently from the body up onto making contact. I am now going to focus on two variations that are a direct result of the preparation phases. How both styles of backswing phases are going to affect the amount of head speed and top spin the players will be able to generate. One will be the hand position between the slot and contact, and two will be the roll of the wrist at contact. So let's look at one first, the hand position between the slot and contact. Now you're going to see right now that the face of the racket, that Novak, the face is much more closed. The strings are pointing at the ground, where here the, str the, the racket is almost uh, perpendicular to the court. Now this can have a big effect, the, the reason why the men will be able to really come up on the ball and generate a lot more topspin. You're going to see now, eye contact, the racket is going to be parallel to the net, and so will Venus's shot. But now watch the, the second the variation, the roll, the wrist eye contact. Watch how the guys, watch the hand of Novak, and the hand is going to roll on top more. 
the wrist is going to release and come on top where here you can see the, almost you can draw a straight line between his forearm and his racket so the wrist released a little bit where most ATP WTA women like Venus after contact the wrist is still laid back and until then the wrist releases so the guys are much more vertical here at contact and this is where they can create can hit that heavier ball what is a heavier ball is a combination of racket head speed and spin they're going to brush and roll the ball at contact versus a lot of WTA women will still be going through kind of plowing through with the wrist laid back and that is the main reason why the guys will hit a heavier ball than the women Let's now look at Roger and Vika, and I stopped it pretty much at the exact same spot where the racket is about to blend into the forward swing, they're both into the slot. Um, now you can see how uh, Vika's racket, the head of the racket is almost uh, uh, perpendicular to the ground versus Roger's uh, racket face is parallel to the ground. And th there's a good reason that, the, that Vika can't get the racket flat like um, Roger can because it's very impossible to, when the racket goes so far beyond the body, to actually close the face of the racket. So it's a more natural way to keep the racket that way. And uh, for Roger to keep it closed the way it is once the racket is kept on the outside of the body. So there's a, there's a direct correlation, uh, you know, why the racket ends up in this, in this spot is pretty much because they have two different types of, of backswings. Now, let's uh, focus now on, again, uh, at the point of contact. And I want to show you, uh, you know, Roger has probably one of the heaviest balls uh, on, on tour. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to pretty stop it right at contact for Roger. It's going to be tough. This is taped in HD. So you can see here that the wrist is laid back. Focus on Roger right now. And immediately after contact, you're going to see the face of the racket, how the face of the racket is closed. Okay, the racket face, the wrist has released. The wrist has come on top of the, 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 the racket has come on top of the ball. And we're going to see that, uh, when Vika is hitting the ball. There is contact. I'm going to reverse it frame by frame. You're going to see that the uh, WTA wrist is still locked and it will not release until later into the swing. So you can see how the, 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 the Vika is kind of pushing through and then it releases where immediately after contact, when I'm going to advance it a couple of frames with Roger, you're going to see how, just like with Novak, how the racket head and the arm are almost into or you can almost kind of draw a, a straight line between the forearm and the racket and you will see it right about there as I'm advancing it slowly um, in slow motion right there you can see almost how the racket and the forearm are kind of, almost kind of straight right here where Vika you can see that double bent is still there the wrist is still pushing back and then the racket ends up releasing well at the end so let's now look at Rafa and Caroline now, I mentioned earlier that Roger hits one of the heaviest balls in, on the ATP Tour. I do agree, but I do believe that Rafa hits a much, much heavier ball uh, than uh, Roger. That has also to do with a little more extreme uh, grip. Uh, Rafa uses a semi-western versus um, uh, Roger using a strong eastern forehand grip. But, for example, the reason why I'm putting those two together, because Caroline Wozniacki, if anything, she's uh, accused of putting too much topspin and not uh, going through the ball enough. But I'm going to show you right now, once again, that uh, the racket face is completely uh, parallel to the ground, right leading up uh, when the back wing face is done and the, the racket is into the slot. Now, Caroline Wozniacki, more than some of us women, you can see now that her racket, remember how the way we, Vika's racket was, the way uh, Venus's racket was, her face is more close, so that's why she's going to get a little bit more topspin than most of those girls. And you will see now at contact, that same thing, both the racket's gonna be at 90 degrees, pretty much parallel to the net. Now you're gonna see how Caroline is gonna release her hand a little bit more than the others, but still, you can see here, so you can still see how the wrist is still laid back, and now comes the release much earlier than Vika and Venus. But you can see right now how Rafa, right away, as he hits the ball, there's that, that vertical lift that is needed to put topspin right at contact. And you can see right there how most guys will hit, hit pretty much the same way and most women will push through. But you see v, um, Caroline uh, sometimes is accused of, of putting too much uh, spin but not enough drive. So I think the way uh, Caroline could really uh, get, get herself to generate a little bit more uh, racket, a heavier ball would be to just pretty much take the racket back the same way the guys do. But that's a whole other video on its own. But you can see right now how 
the WTA forehand, even though she's going to release the hand earlier than most women. You can see right here she pushes through the ball versus the guys who release to create that perfect blend of racket head speed and topspin. To finish off the uh, explanation of the real dramatic difference between the point of contact of the two, I'm going to show you right now Andy Murray, and I want you to follow in slow motion how the wrist really releases immediately, immediately after contact, and this is what this part that all the WTA players, I'm sorry, ATP Tour players have in common, that quick release, the racket head speed, the head of the racket coming on top, the wrist rolling on top of the ball. And this is with Serena, it has a big forehand, but watch when she hits the ball, how the, the, the palm and the, the palm is, the wrist is still locked, still laid back, and then it rolls after. So Serena does it pretty much exactly the same way most WTA women do. and. Um, Andy pretty much does the same thing that all ATP guys do. The last obvious variation is the follow through and the ATP uh, style follow through is a direct result really of what happened prior to swinging. As I told you before the guys really are able to generate so much more racket head speed by keeping the racket on the outside of their body and then they're swinging with the arm much more independently from the body versus the women kind of on call as they're hitting and that the racket is naturally going to find its way around the non-hitting shoulder where you can see here how uh, Venus like most women the follow through will go up and over the non-hitting shoulder much more conventional follow through because they were not able to gather as much racket head speed as as the guys. I will show you here her sister. Uh, she's going to follow through pretty much the same way up and over the non-hitting shoulder. And same thing with Maria Sharapova. Really, the conventional both hands together over the of the non-hitting shoulder. And if we go over to the guys. I will show you over and over how the racket will have a tendency of just wrapping itself up around the body. Even though he's not hitting the ball hard right there, watch how the swing, the racket goes more across and below the non-hitting shoulder. And same thing with Rafa, the racket will go across and below. So it has a lot to do with everything that happened prior to contact will affect the uh, type of follow through. So that is why there's a big difference between the two follow throughs, between the ATP and the WTA follow through. I'm now going to show you how Sam Storzer is the only woman currently in the top 10 with an ATP style tour forehand. I'm going to let the tape roll and you're going to see all the exact same swing that she uses the exact same way that Novak Djokovic has. Watch how the racket is going to stay on the outside of the hand. The racket is never going to go behind her body. Watch how they get into the high powered slot together by laying their wrist back. Then you will notice how the hand is going to release at contact. The wrist is going to roll up and over the top of the ball and the signature ATP style follow through the wrap around the body and not the conventional over the shoulder like most uh, WTA players. So you can see how Sam Stozer right now is currently the only player on the WTA tour that uses that style of forehand. So let's take a look at Justine Hennon's forehand. To me, her ATP style forehand has allowed her to compete against Venus and Serena and uh, Kim Kleister. All of the, all the, are their, her opponents were in their prime, girls that were big and strong, but she was able to handle, handle their power and counter attack their balls by using an ATP tour style forehand. Look at the racket is staying outside the hand. The racket never goes beyond the body. There's the high powered slot and there's their hand release right there for the top spin and the, the ATP style tour follow through around and below the non-hitting shoulder and to me there's a direct correlation of why she was ha able to handle and become the one double um, number one player in the world and win so many grand slams with a, such little frame that she was able to really handle and counter attack the power of the Williams sisters and Kim Kleisters in the beginning of the career at Lindsay Davenport as well. There are two other women, except for Sam Stozer, that use an ATP style uh, forehand. You can see here Francesca Schiavone, a former number one and Grand Slam winner, 
using the exact stroke that the ATP guys use. You can see the racket staying outside of the hand. You can see the high powered slot and the quick release for the heavy top spin and the ATP style follow through. Now, is it a coincidence that she was able to really, she's a, a very small frame as well, able to handle girls that are much stronger? And I, I believe not. But this next player, this next player I'm really excited about. Her name is Christina McHale, young, an up and coming American that is trying to make some noise on the WTA tour and watch how she has ad adapted an ATP style forehand into her game. From the shortened backswing, the, the face close, you're going to see the release at contact and the follow the ATP style of uh, um, forehand follow through so is it a, co uh, a coincidence that more and more uh, we're going to start to see more and more young players doing that or is it just the evolution of the game that that really just like the men went through that the players start hitting the ball harder and harder and the only way you can keep up with a hard hit ball is to really shorten that swing and not to take such a big back swing and I truly believe that this style of forehand really should be taught to young women, young juniors early and to, they'll be able to face and really not get overpowered by some opponents. So I really truly believe that Christina McHale is showing us really a, a, a peak of the future of the WTA style forehand will look a lot like the ATP style forehand. So you just saw the many differences between the ATP style forehand to the WTA style forehand. On the ATP tour, I really think that the game is maxed out, that guys cannot hit the ball any harder that on both sides they can only generate a lot of power but also handle it. So that's why you can see now the all-court player is coming back, that more points have been won at the net. There's more of a thinking game of planning things out. You're really excited about that. Where on a WTA tour you can still see players staying at the baseline and just pounding and hitting winners. I mean, how many times have you seen Sharapova do that? Just sit back and hit winners and when it's not working well, it's just not working. But I truly believe that on the WTA tour you will see in the next few years a slow evolution and more and more players adapting that ATP style of forehand. Once again, my name is Christoph Delavo from TennisOxygen.com and I really hope you enjoyed that video.